This Photoshop pattern has been created based on a photo. So let's look and see how we could do that. I'm going to start over at unsplash.com because it's a good site for downloading images that you can use. And in this case, I went looking for birds and I found this bird. What you want is something with a fairly clear background. So it's going to be pretty easy to be able to extract it. And I also wanted to be able to see the bird's feet so that they wouldn't be cut off. Think in terms of whatever you're seeing in the photo is going to be the element that's going to be in your pattern. Now, I've already downloaded this image by Regine Tholen and I have it on my computer. I highly recommend Unsplash.com as being a good site to use for purposes such as this. Back in Photoshop, so I'm going to open the file. I've already had it open recently, so I'm just going to go and grab my image. The first thing to do is to get the bird off the background. And in the most recent versions of Photoshop, here in a toolbar position that it shares with the magic wand tool is the object selection tool. I'm just going to target that. And as I hover over the image, you'll see that the AI here is picking up things that I can select. Now I want to select the bird, so I'm just going to hover over it and click once. Now I'm going up here to select and mask because we want to have a look at the mask that we have got. You can have a look at it against black and white or you can have a look at it on layers, which is how we're actually going to use it. I'm really happy with that. I don't want a really perfect bird. I don't want all the feathers around the edge. So this is not a good mask for other purposes, but it's perfect for our purpose here today. I'm going down to Output Settings. If that's not open, you can open it up with this triangle. Output 2, and you're going to choose New Layer with Layer Mask, and then click OK. The reason for this is that we now get access to this Layer Mask. I'm going to hold down the Alt key. That would be the Option key on a Mac, and just click on the Layer Mask, because we want to have a look at it, and you'll see that it's a little bit soft around the edges. So what I'm going to do with the Layer Mask in the editing area where I can actually work on it is go to image and then adjustments and threshold. And what this does is allows us to remove all the softening on the edges. What we're doing is we're saying every pixel has to be black or white. It can't be a shade of gray. It can't be soft. And we're just going to use the default level, which is 128. That's fine. Just click OK. And then you can click back on your image and you have a, again, harder mask. This is going to be perfect. I'm going to crop the image at this point. So I'm going to the crop tool. I'm just going to crop around the bird. Now we're going to make this layer into a smart object. So you're going to right click on the layer. You'll need to right click over here, not elsewhere, and choose convert to smart object. We can now apply a filter to this image, but before you do, you want to make sure that the colors here are the colors that you want in the final bird. I'm just using black and white, but if you want to, for example, a sepia toned one, then choose a brown color. Once you've got your colors selected, then you can choose filter and then filter gallery. And in the filter gallery, we're going to the sketch collection and you're going to stamp. Now this image is so big I can't see it clearly, so I'm just going to click on Fit to Screen. We've got a couple of options here. We can adjust the dark light balance so we can get it to be a little bit darker or a little bit brighter, bringing in a bit more detail in the feathers. Now smoothness, you want it set to a fairly small level because this is what happens when you go too high. So I'm just doing a smoothness of about five. I want a little bit of smoothness, but not a lot. I'll click OK. Now I also want to put an edge effect around this bird. Now you can do this or not as you please. To do this, I'm going down to the FX icon at the foot of the layers palette. I've obviously got my bird layer selected and I'm going to choose stroke. And this allows me to stroke around the bird. It's going to increase the size of my stroke here and you can see it's a sort of bluey green color. This is also the point at which we can see that we've got a fairly nice edge to our selection doing it the way that I just showed you. We haven't got the edge effect coming out away from the bird. It's tucked in really nice and closely around the bird. If you want to choose a different color, you can do so. I'm happy with this sort of turquoise color. I'll click OK. So this is the element that we're going to use in our pattern, but it is too big. So at this stage, we're going to resize our image. I'll go to image, image size. 
I'm going to choose an image size of 800 wide by 644 pixels tall. If you're thinking in terms of printing, that's going to be something that is about two and a half inches by two inches in size. If you want something larger, then just make it larger. But this is the size that I want for my element. So I now have a document here that's 800 pixels wide by 644 tall. For my actual pattern, I'm going to create a brand new document with file and new. I'm going to make it a little bit larger than the bird itself. So I'm thinking 1200 by 1200 is a good size. I'm going back to my bird image. I'm going to grab this layer here, just grab it and drop it onto the tab for my pattern document. If I hold the shift key as I drop it, it's going to be dropped into the very middle of the document. Now we want another one of these, so I'm going to grab it and drop it onto the plus sign here. So we now have two birds. I'm going to turn the bottom one off. We're going to work on this top one. I need to throw it to the edges of this document. So I'm going to choose Filter, Other, and then Offset. And the thing with the Offset filter is that you're just going to put values in here that are half of the width and half of the height of the document. The document was 1200 by 1200. If we divide 1200 by 2, we get 600. So I'm putting 600 and 600. And I'm just going to click OK. I'm also going to count feet and tails because sometimes Photoshop can do some weird stuff here but I do appear to have a couple of legs, I have a tail and a head. Everything's looking reasonably good for me right now. I'm going to turn back on the middle bird and this one I'm going to flip so it's pointing the other way. These four are going to be one bird pointing in this direction. I'm going to take this bird and flip it. So I'll choose Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal. I'm going to move it back a little bit because by flipping it horizontally, I've lost the balance in my image. What I'm looking for is about even amounts of space between this bird and the birds at the edge. So you may need to adjust your middle element to suit. I'm going to add a background to my document. I already have a white background here. I'm just targeting it. What I'm going to do is choose layer, new fill layer, solid color. I like this because it allows me to preview what my background is going to look like. So I can just go through and select colors. I can do whatever I like at this point to see what I'm going to use. And this solid color layer is, I think it's a really, really good tool to use. So I'm just looking for something that I like. I found something, I'll click OK. This is my pattern element. So I can now go and choose Edit, Define Pattern. And I'll just click OK at this stage. Let's test our pattern with File and then New. I'm going to create a document 3600 by 3600. You just need something that is larger than your original pattern piece so that you can work out if the pattern's working or not. Just turning this background layer into a regular layer. Going to the Patterns panel. If you can't see yours, go to Window and then Patterns. The last pattern is going to be the one that we just created. Of course, at this point, you just want to make sure that none of the birds have breaks through them. So provided you check one pointing in each direction, you can convince yourself that everything is perfect. Now you can also get a monochromatic look from this. Let's go back into this document. Let's go to the very topmost layer. I'm going to add a hue saturation adjustment layer. Layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation. Click OK and click colorize. And now we can adjust the saturation and the lightness and then adjust the color. So this is going to give us a monochromatic look. We've got sort of a dark purple, a lighter purple and a sort of mid purple here. And you can just drag around on this hue slider to find a combination of monochromatic colors that you really like. So I kind of like that purple one. So let's make a pattern out of that as well. Once you've found the look that you want, just go to edit. Now you might find this happens. You can see here that define pattern is not available. So what I'm going to do is just come out, click away from this and let's try again. Edit define pattern is now available. It's just that having that hue saturation adjustment selected was prohibiting me from being able to make a pattern out of this. Let's go back into this document. If I double click on this little icon here, 
I can go down to the very last pattern and this is the purple version that I created. I think you'll find that the new object selection tool in Photoshop will help you create designs like this a little bit more quickly and effectively. If you like carefully researched content like this clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.